Charles Randy Sneed, I show George Null, I show Julie Stauffer, I show Dustin Johnson, Suzanne Umlaw, I show Derek Jones, town attorney, and I show Lisa Mullaney, club treasurer. I stand to do the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes of August 17, 2016, Regular session. <coughs> we have uh, a motion. Is it okay? Yeah, down in the bubble. Christmas decoration. Is there any other corrections? Additions? Motion to accept with the one change down in the Christmas preparation to state uh, council member Umbaugh motion to allow uh, purchase not vice president. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. We have a motion and a second to accept the minutes as changed to read council member Umbaugh. All in favor say aye. Uh, Aye. Motion carries. Citizens input. I just have a question, Lisa. Did the council buy the new mums that go in all the flower pots? Was the council are they yes, the ones it was part of my flower them? budget? It does each um, organization or businessmen are they to keep them watered or should they water we've got four or five of them right now that just look sick the last two or three days it's been so hot yes so shall we jane and i take water and i talked to, to jane about that today okay. and i told her that the businesses that are there have been contacted okay. to water she understands that the ones on her block not everybody is there right there's no businesses in that block really right so um she has offered to water those okay julie is taking care of two on her block dustin's taking care of two on his okay. the um the tattoo out. shop the barber shop and jay's have all been notified okay because they look sad and <laughs> julie has been notified julie okay. that has a hair salon okay so. All right, that's fine though. Thank you. Yeah. Moving on. Old business, attorney report. Everything I have to talk about appears elsewhere in the agenda and the very <laughs> next item on the agenda is the RMC matter. So I don't really have anything to report, but I certainly have things to talk about as they come up on the agenda. So with your permission, I'll just move into that RMC matter. All right. Um, I sent an email to the council late last week, I think it was. Um, we're basically at the point where RNMC is asking for, in essence, a proposal, a formal proposal from the town so that they can act upon that as well. They have a board meeting on September 12th, um, and I think the invitation here is to, in essence, speed this process up or to get something moving. Um, but what it is that's been discussed, and I, I think it's, I don't see Jim or Jamie either one here tonight, but I know where they stand, uh, that they're comfortable with regarding the colonial estate subdivision, calling the dividing line between the two service territories, calling that dividing line Heritage Street, which is what they're serving now, and what RMC is currently serving as well. But then 
we also had circulated a map, and I see everybody's got a copy of that map in their part in their packets here. It's a little bit maybe tough to decipher what we're looking at on that map, but that yellow highlighted area is, in essence, a portion of the solar park that we would say to RMC, we would assume the territory over that solar park parcel, and we would, in essence, trade for another parcel that's been kind of sectioned out with the red X and the circle um, that is already currently being served by REMC. Um, that's probably just a mistake or an oversight, but we would, in essence, formalize their ability to serve that territory. We would pick up the balance of the solar park, and we would also call Heritage Street the dividing line out in colonial estates. They're asking that that be reduced to a formal proposal to the REMC so that they can act upon that. So what does Jim think about it? They're in favor of calling Heritage Street the dividing line in colonial estates. They also said while we're at it in terms of, and I recognize Randy that now you weren't here that I think about that at that or last meeting. Um, they didn't feel that it was necessarily worth the fight. We could lose some territories and both right. and any. Um, but they also said that while we're at it, let's kind of fix this little area down yeah. here where that we would one have house that sits back that lane. Correct. We would in essence lose that on the map, but we're not serving it right now anyway. Right. But we would definitely gain the entire solar park in terms of that being within the town's service territory. Okay. Means your house is an Argus Electric out the side of the streets on AMC. It's going to remain, it's going to remain the same then? Okay. That's what that meant. That's what. <laughs> we still have water and sewer, but it's just the electric, right? Nothing to do with water and sewer, right? Absolutely nothing to do with that. Just like, and we just need to propose that to them and a formal, and then they'll be happy. And well, they are asking mm -hmm. that that be made a formal proposal, right. which we really amount to nothing more than my communicating that to our MC's attorney, yeah. saying yes, this was the official action from this meeting. Uh, but then it would be recognized as a formal proposal for RUMC to say yes, we will accept that, or no, we'll reject that. So we it, just need to accept it. Well, if we want to make, accept it. Make that as a proposal right. and, and vote on it, and then I can communicate that to their attorney. I make a motion and have Derek proceed on this. Get on. Does it help you out so the record's clear on proceed means to call Heritage Street the dividing line? Yes, yes. I'm, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. And, then, and that's okay. I'm just trying to make it clear for the right. record. And then also to in essence, uh, well, give up the service territory on the map that's got the red X in the circle, right. but right. obtain the balance of the Soul Smart Park. Correct. And I'll second to this proposal. We've got a motion and a second to <clears throat> make this our formal proposal. To make the dividing line on Heritage Street. <clears throat> and to let REMC, this currently servicing the house anyways, service the house and then we get the balance of the solar park. Does that sound all right? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I guess I don't necessarily have anything, like I said, to report. Um, okay. So we're, wherever you want to draw the line and turn the report, that's, that's fine. Well, let's go, we'll just let you take a break and we'll go to the old library. Well, as you can see, the bids are not here. I received no bids by email and they were supposed to be here tonight on showing up that building. So, until we get those, I thought actually he called me last week, Chet called me last week and said they were having tonight. So we'll just table that until we get those. 
Green Slope Monument. <laughs> okay, back on that. Um, I guess, how far do we want to proceed this fall? Do we just want to get that foundation in, in the proposed spot that we talked about? The part, I, I told Jim to be here. I've not heard anything back from the park board either. To just go ahead and set the foundation, if we can, with that flagpole. Get the tree down first, get that set, and be done with that for this year. That wouldn't, you know, interfere with the monument that's there. Do we want to go ahead and proceed with the water fountain, or do we want to get the water fountain I even have it there? Those are the things we need to know, but we need to get the foundation dug and poured if we want to have it set November. If we don't want to have it set November, and you want to set it in the building and wait till next year, that's totally up to everybody, but then it's going to be a pain in the butt. So, what did you find out about that? I have been bowl. successful. No. I'm going to say it doesn't surprise me. No, I've, and I've, I've tried searching online, but I'm not the best at that. I don't. Without paying for a service. I don't think that, as long as we wouldn't deface, I mean, as long as we no. still have their plaque on a flagpole, I don't think. That's not I, mean, I was moving it from point A to right. point B. I mean, we're not destroying it or changing nothing. We're just repositioning. Right. There. Yep. So that's how far we want to go. Take that out for the foundation, get it set, <coughs> put everything else on hold this spring, which we're going to have to anyway. It's too late in the year to really be doing any of the rest of it. We've got too many other irons in the fire. Yeah. So I guess yeah, we can't. We can, we got to have a, like a stopping place. We can't do it all. We can only go so far with it. So we get the tree out. We pull the flagpole. Cut. Of course, you're going to cut that same right. foundation. We get the flagpole out. Set that monument there. Do we then not set the flagpole till spring? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because then you're going to be putting it someplace, and oh, we don't like it there. We want to move it over here. We got to just. We have to have a line on it, right? Yes. So if it was taken down for winter, I, you know, I'm, I'm just. <laughs> I want to say something. I'm not going to say it. You're going to lose a couple of points on that. I'm just going to say either way you look at it, somebody's going to be unhappy. Yeah. But we got to get the foundation in here in the next. 30 days so it can set for 30 days. Come in. So that would be my vote to take the flagpole down, set the foundation, and store the flagpole and thing till spring, and then reset it in the spring when you decide that you're going to put in a water fountain. You could extend the sidewalk. Yeah, but if you want to do any of that, but just if, if everybody's happy with leaving the two monuments where they are and then build everything around that we can. I mean, that's going to be your starting point. We right. can't say, oh gosh, we wish we'd moved that. Yeah, what's that over here, or yeah. we moved it over here. If we're happy with the two monuments here, you can always put the flight pole, you know. You see so many different things in so many different towns, and it's, it's there's some things you can do. But I don't know. That so would be my first step. Be here. It'll be here before Veterans Day. If you don't set the monument this year, you're going to have about seven families down here. Yeah. So is that your motion? Uh, you know, we can do that without park board approval, can't we? Since it's still in the town. Because they've never given us their two cents worth. Town owns the property. Right. Not the park board. Right. Well, I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't think that might be important to the decision. But I temper your motion so long as the town owns the real estate. Has anybody talked to the park board? Are they on board with this? No. I mean, the ones that were there have been on board with it. <laughs> Suzanne? <laughs> they didn't have a quorum the night we walked over. We came to the park board meeting and there was no quorum. So we tried to. You know when the next park board meeting is? They've had two since then. Or they had another one since then, and I didn't hear back from them. No, they haven't been doing this. was if the town owns the real estate, I understand the park board may govern, control, or manage it, but 
town property. And I understand our court is what you call under the town, but I would rather get their blessing than step on toes. And I know that it's in the same town, but you could maybe make your motion again to temper it so long as some by the town and with the park force blessing. I don't know how soon they meet again, but when you would. Bob's waiting. The 15th. So that's not far off. So it's three weeks after the council meeting. Okay. 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 Yeah. Last Monday. Last Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Last Monday. 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 Yeah. Well, the new monument, where the, where the flagpole is, as long as we get the blessing from the park board. And if, if we find out that the property is still ours, we can just go ahead and do it, I guess. I mean, we got to move on. Can we ask the park board to have a special meeting? I, you still got time if it's the third. I mean, next Thursday, if it's the third. Thursday. They, they're saying. They're saying set concrete, uh, you can make a set and set that monument in the morning if you want to. You, know, okay. you can put every way you want in it. It doesn't really have to set that long. I'm just, that's their recommendation as a monument company. And my motion is to go ahead and remove the flagpole, dig the foundation where the flagpole is, store the flagpole till spring, and then we can get deeper into it and get a good idea of where we want everything so we're not just... Now, do we know, since they're going to be doing this sidewalk and some other work, are they going to have time to put that foundation in? I would hope so. Jim said they would. Jim said, Jim Jim said they would. Okay. We have a motion. We got a second. We got a motion and a second. Take the flag pull down and store it till spring. Um, and set the new foundation where the flagpole currently is yep. as long as it's okay with the park board. And remove the tree. <laughs> before we set the monument. The tree needs to be gone right. before, before we set that monument. Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Cemetery board. I'm gonna let you step back in there on this. Derek. Okay. Um, I think it's gonna take a little more than just the, the voter Dustin uh, to move to abolish it. Uh, I know that was what was that's what was done at the last meeting. I don't think that's really effective to abolish or vacate the the cemetery board. Looking at the statutes, it's easy to see the statutes to see how to create the cemetery board or a board of cemetery regents, as it's called and what I think that we have, but there's no clear statute that says this is the steps of the procedure to abolish or vacate the cemetery board. But the statutes do talk about that the city or town may, by ordinance, transfer control to the cemetery board. And taking a look at the history that we do have and the things that we can find. I know that we've looked for the ordinance before that created the cemetery board, um, but the closest thing we can find or that I've been able to find um, is something that dates back to 1927, and it's really a document entitled Regulations and Bylaws of the Maple Grove Cemetery Board. And it refers to an ordinance that was adopted by the town on the third day of August of 1927. Now, I don't have that ordinance. I don't know if anybody's got that ordinance, and nobody can seem to find that ordinance, but it would it would be in conjunction with what the statute says, and I understand we're talking 90-some years ago, but the statute today says you need an ordinance to create a cemetery board. This document says that an ordinance did create the cemetery board, and I'm going to recommend that you have an ordinance that vacates or repeals or abolishes the cemetery board and I think that's the best way to go about that. Um, I don't see any specific requirements about publishing any kind of notice or anything like that. And really all you're doing here is basically who's going to have the, the management and control of the cemetery board if that's what this council decides to do by abolishing the cemetery. 
Um, I understand now there's what, one member on the secretary board? Yes. Okay. So it's obviously not a functioning body, and it's not really going to get much done in that way either. Um, but it's up to uh, the council. If the council wants to abolish the cemetery board, I think it would take an ordinance to do that. But then you're going to get to run it, manage it, control it. That's just more on our plate. I, mean, yes. I don't have a problem with the cemetery board. <coughs> kind of like the park board or any other board the boards are created to alleviate some of our burden mm -hmm. but if it's not working it's still our burden <laughs> so unless you can drag somebody in there <laughs> to do it you see what kind of luck we have I, I don't think another board member can serve on it can they oh, well, George yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot to ask you that. <laughs> right, two Republicans, two Democrats, yeah. and then the only lot in the cemetery, or be a freeholder in the municipal municipality, um, four member board. Hang on. I'm doing a quick scan and skim here of this thing, but and I'm not saying it's not the case, but I'm not seeing political party makes any difference from where the other. Two, two. And again, that's what you get when you try to sit here and skim stuff. And I don't, I don't, this is not the way to do things. Right. Right. Now, what did you say about me as a liaison? What about you as a liaison? You mentioned that I was actually a member. You are, in essence, the tie-breaking vote, right? If it comes to that, and that's again, that's it. That's it, though. Yes. Okay. You, you can sit and listen to all the things they want to, and they're going to ask you questions, and then you get to break the rules. Never had to. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't yeah. see anything about political yeah. party. I don't see the statute of the way I Just like they're only a house in town. The property. Oh. Or on the lot. Yeah, or on the grave. Okay. We'll just uh, leave it open for them. I don't like the idea of taking on the extra burden, but then on the other hand, it's not working. If we can get people by the next meeting, fine. Then if we don't, maybe then we start looking at abolishing. That's how I feel. Bring Ellen in a standstill because I can't find anywhere where the bylaws were ever adopted. Well, and that's a separate issue altogether. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the bylaws are really nothing more than the rules and regulations of the cemetery itself. And that's, again, just derived from a statute, uh, statute here that grants the cemetery board certain powers. Bylaws are really, and that's a fine name to call the rules and regulations, that's okay. But bylaws are really something I think of when you hear about a corporation that has bylaws, and that's kind of the document that governs the relationship between shareholders and directors and officers. We don't necessarily have all those positions in the cemetery board, and I think probably the more accurate thing to call the bylaws are the rules and regulations, and, and certainly. You can have as many rules and regulations or as few rules and regulations as you want. But that's up to the board or if the council decides you're going to run it, manage it. It's up to the council. Okay. What do you think, George? I'm with Suzanne. All right. What are you? Suzanne. All right, we're with Suzanne. We're going to the next meeting. So we'll decide at the next meeting what we're going to do with the cemetery board. Come up on anything else there? Let me know. I don't think I am. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want this back? 
right, moving on. Hoosier Start Deferred Compensation Plan. I think you got this little paper and a pamphlet in front of me for a resolution. And I don't know a lot about this. I, I was do. just told about it. You want me to explain it for you? Sure. The 457B plan. All the employees have a pension, but what this allows them to do, the state will sponsor a 457B plan. It's like a 401k at uh, the place where you work. Uh, the town can either contribute or not contribute, so they could have a, a they could have it set up as a plan where just the employees can contribute. When the employees contribute, they have the choice of either having it into a pre-tax account where they do it and it's tax deductible basically, or they can have a Roth where it's not deductible, but when they retire, they can take the money or take the income from it and it's tax free. But it's basically a government 401k plan. State sponsored, so there's like little or probably no cost to the town to adopt the thing. Uh, the main thing it would be Lisa deducting from their big check for contributions. Thank you, Mark. I was I was told that there's no cost. Can I get the big bucks for it? All, all they really need is our blessing on this resolution. <clears throat> the agreement. Yeah, I had Jamie and Candy sit down with the guy for this, and um, Jamie says there's very little management fees. He would recommend that we adopt this just on the basis of if we get new employees and they have 401s other places and their management fees are high they can roll their 401s into something like this and reduce the cost of their management fees and also I, it's my understanding that even if we wanted to we could contribute to up to the up to your salary per year. Right. Which is just I just threw that out there. That's all. Yeah. I make a motion to adopt the Hoosier Start Program. Sounds good. Got motion. This is resolution. I I just brought it from the motion and uh, four fifty nine. There's actually a Pierce guy in the room. I'm just looking at this, but I think there's a resolution here that they would ask to be signed if you're inclined to participate in the program. <clears throat> so it says a resolution must be adopted terminating its participating in the plan. The resolution must specify when the participation in the plan ends. So, so you can end the plan if you want to. Uh, you can put restrictions on qualifications too. Like they have to be here three months before they qualify. If they make less than $1,000 a year, they don't qualify. I basically brought it forward as just information. If you guys want to look through it some more and you can refine the resolution and then maybe adopt it on the next meeting, I'm okay with that. I just wanted to bring it forward as um, to help out the employees. When are they talking about starting this? First of the year? Um, you, can, you can actually start it whenever. You know, it's, it's all, you just fill in the dates and stuff. But they, they really wanted us to get it started as soon as possible so that people could start contributing. What makes this so much better than just going out and getting your own from you or whatever? Um, the investments are going to have much less 
management fees because they're going to be I shares, number one. Number two, with the 457B, you as a council could say, okay, for 2017, uh, we will contribute 2% into the employee's 457B plan. So you can decide if you want to contribute for the employees, not contribute. Plus, the IRA they can cash out. This they don't really get out of unless they quit employment. So they have to keep their fingers off of it a little bit longer, George. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get mine right unless I quit. Right. Can't do anything on it. That's not <laughs> I'll second our motion just so you keep talking about it. But. <laughs> so I'll just say, is there any more discussion? So there's no resolution here, right? There is. This is like a questionnaire state. Oh, oh no, the, the adoption resolution. agreement. Yeah, the resolution is on the first two pages, right. first three pages, and then the agreement for through the employer is on the rest oh, of it. Oh, I see it, and it's on the back. Yes, so we could adopt it as resolution 2016-11, just to have a safe number. There's an 800 number there somewhere you can call if you want to get, which I would recommend and yeah. ask for the, the packet of the investments they offer. We can also have, the, the guy would be willing to come in and talk to the council if they would like. He just wanted me to kind of bring it forward. Um, my husband had it when he worked for INDOT. Most of your state and all of your state employment has it. So. You do have some options, of course, too, as Mark was saying, you would have to select that at some point if you choose to participate and execute the resolution. So, if you want to have a workshop, we can do that. I like the idea of a workshop, get some of the employees their feedback, what they would like. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, I agree. I think we need to have a workshop on it. I think we need to find out the investments. A few things we should find out. But we do have a motion in a second. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. aye. <laughs> this, we went through the motions, but we're going to have a workshop. We're, we're not going to do it as of now no. until you get all your information. Well, she can she still vote for it. Yeah, no, she can still vote for it. Yeah, so I'm just saying. vote for it. She's just wanting to usually vote for your own motion. Opposed? <laughs> opposed. Randy? How opposed to the other work that? I guess I oppose for the workshop. I oppose for the workshop. Okay, moving on. Uh, board openings. Uh, Marshall uh, County Tourism uh, Cemetery Board has three openings. One Republican and two Democrats. No. What? You just have to have, you just know they're not Republican and Democrat. I thought they were. I just went over that. <laughs> Dustin, I think, yeah, I don't know that there's any necessary political affiliation for the Cemetery Board. That's um, interesting. Quick look on that. Thanks. And a planning commission. Um, do we still have redevelopment? We still have one on the redevelopment? Oh, I didn't think we did. And the BZA. 
No more than two member residents appointed may be members of the same political party. That's what I thought of. I said to you. I see 231465 11. Not more than two residents, same political party. Sorry. Sorry, I can still can't use Democrats or Republicans because you can be. Any other old business? <laughs> 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 Marshes. Any <laughs> business? Yes. Um, I forgot to make copies. I guess this would fall under old business. The Marshall County EDC report. I can either give you the report orally or I can make copies later and get them to you. Because I forgot to make copies. We'll just take you under new business. Hmm? We'll just take you under new business because it's the report for the month, right? Yep. Okay, so I'll wait. Oh, we're done with old business. I just so said. So we're not for new business? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already said new business. All right, well, I wasn't paying attention. That's all right. <laughs> uh, under marketing. It's uh, Gary toured the ITAMCO building with uh, Gary Nidig, and uh, they looked at some things and did some talk. Along with he did a meet and greet with Consolidated Containers with Steve Bell, the plant manager. Under product development, residential development, he met with Suzanne Umbaugh, Mark Vanderweel, an owner of Colonial Estates. I forgot to ask him what that was all about, but you know Tank, so you share it with him later. Uh, Regional Development Authority, if we had an RDA meeting, RDA from Northern Central Indiana votes to approve Regional City's funding request. Uh, <clears throat> that's where a lot of the projects that were sent into regions, some were approved, some were not approved, but uh, I'll find out more about that this Friday morning at uh, our Marshall County EDC meeting. The, uh, he's been working on the marathon, the gas station property. And he's lining up uh, some banks. Uh, he's had some lender meetings with IAB Financial and Centier. Working on the Argus marketing video. All video filming is complete. The video is in post-production, whatever post-production means. So I guess we're getting toward the end of that one. Comprehensive plan update on the comp plan with May, uh, MACOG and Marshall County EDC at the Argus Council meeting on August 3rd. We have a MACOG economic development activity, a comprehensive plan they've been working on. And the steering committee meets September the 12th. You're on that, right? Uh, internal communications, he attended the Argus Council uh, meeting. And then, of course, uh, this is the uh, August report that was prepared. All right. Thank you, Mark. And the question is welcome as long as it's not detailed. Any questions? No, no. <clears throat> All right. Any other new business? I go back to citizens' input real quick. It might be new business, old business, but this is something that was in the um, paper, I believe, and it had to do with back when we were having our elections. It's been a sore subject. It was a letter that went out against one of the people that was running, and the prosecutor's office is asking if anybody got the letter against Patty Jones if they would call. At least I know that the people are against that kind of thing, I guess you want to call it. I got one of those letters. I called, told them I got the letter. I would testify in court that I got the letter. I don't know if you want to call it slanderous or whatever. You need to read the article that they wrote so that you can get the exact wording you want. And it doesn't mean that there had to be 100 letters written. 
like in my household, the letter came to my household, there's three of us that vote. That's three people. So there's three of a hundred that's already called. I know of about five other people in town, I don't know anybody else, but if you got the letter, at least just call and let them know that the citizens of Vargas don't really go for this. Because it could happen next election to any one of us. It's just propaganda bull. So I push you to call if you got the letter. Numbers 574-935-8666. That's all I got. All right. Thanks, George. Any other new business? Claims 979 through 1059. The total docket for September 7, 2016 is $342,002.76. The top five claims are claim 1,003 for IMPA for $180,569.71. Claim number 988 for payroll number 17 for $32,715.34. Claim number 992 for Tracy Thayer Construction for $13,770.02. Claim number 1005 for United Healthcare at $12,854.48. Claim number 1001, Annex or Power Solutions for $12,488.75. Those top five claims total $252,398.30, which is 73% of this total docket. There is an error in your docket. For gamblers, I'm not exactly sure the number, I apologize. 1,022? Yeah, 1,022. That one was paid on the last docket when Jim went in for knee surgery. Somebody pulled another invoice off of his desk and put it into my bill payment. So I caught it, and I wanted to let you know that I have voided since voided that check. Unfortunately, I didn't catch it before I printed the check. Um, it got too hot and they think that they replaced the temperature sensor on the sign but they're saying that our sign is black and it's been a very hot summer and they're thinking that they may have to replace the two fans that are in it if that happens you're looking at six to eight thousand dollars so right now we're just living with the temperature sensor. Um, during the fair, it said it was 61 degrees outside. Oops. Yeah, what do you know? <coughs> the magnetic thing. <laughs> like the gas station. <laughs> so they, they did temporary fixes. They blew out the filters and <coughs> stuff like that to try and fix it for now. It keeps shutting off at odd times just randomly shuts off. The hook team server. The time on it was, it was losing time. So. 
Can anyone call and ask to put something on the sign? Yes. So we will put anything that anyone asks. Within reason. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're not going to put it, please vote for Suzanne for town council on the sign. You know what I mean? Because that wouldn't be fair. I'd have to put everybody on there. So well, I'm just, you say within reason. I guess, you know, if the council really objected to anything that I would put on the sign, then they're more than welcome to voice that concern. I normally do it for nonprofits and like the school functions, stuff like that, blood drives. Um, I don't normally get into anything political or the concerned citizens. I was told that that is a, a legitimate nonprofit that has been formed and that um, they have invited school board members to their meetings. You know, it's not just that is a nonprofit. That's what I've been told. So, and that they are actually a group of citizens that are concerned about saving the school. So I didn't foresee it being a problem. I, I I have a school board member that works here, and he didn't have a problem with me putting it on the sign. So I did run it by them. So I went to the meeting, and they seem to have one well objective. Okay. Well, if you don't want me to put it on the sign anymore, I. Yeah. Back up one step. I'll make a motion to accept things with the change you pointed out. <laughs> Got a motion and a second to accept the claims with the change that Lisa pointed out with Gimpler. Gimpler. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Did you want to keep on this or you want to do it after the meeting? Make it talk afterwards. Okay. I need a motion to adjourn. I need a motion to adjourn. I'll say a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.